This video is kindly sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command. Fleet Command is an award-winning 4X MMO strategy game on mobile, iOS and Android, and has recently launched a new expansion to the game, introducing a lot of stuff from the Star Trek Lower Decks series, including a story arc in-game, a large content expansion with new ways to strengthen the crew and new officers, including Mariner and Boimler from the show, and also Badgie, who we all love. And perhaps most excitingly, they are introducing the California-class USS Cerritos, which quite appropriately is depicted in-game as being able to buff other ships and serving as a sort of support craft, much like the California class is in the canon. It allows players to increase stats in damage, penetration, mitigation and shields through research and provides a force multiplier for your fleet. Fleet Command is updated monthly with new content and new story elements. It has a vast and growing existing player base and if you follow the link in the description you'll be able to check the game out and you will be supporting Space Dock, which we always appreciate. So please do check it out and thank you to Star Trek Fleet Command for supporting this video. Hello everybody, I'm Hujiwana from Space Dock. Today we return to the topic of spacecraft propulsion, in particular the many varieties of faster than light travel across science fiction. Technically, superluminous travel isn't really allowed by physics as we know it, for complicated reasons involving things like relativity, causality and light cones. But it's in sci-fi anyway because it's just fun and allows many stories to be told. The following list is more of a high level overview of all the different types of FDL. I based it on the Landis list, created by NASA aerospace engineer and Hugo Award winning author Jeffrey A. Landis. To start off, the list is broken down into two halves, discontinuous and continuous, as well as some miscellaneous options at the end. Discontinuous drives have the user teleport from one location to the other, without travelling through the intervening space, though there is often some wiggling around with alternate dimensions like subspace, but you get the point. The first group within discontinuous travel is object teleporters, or devices that teleport a separate object to or from a location. Sometimes these can require a transmitter or receiver, or even both. Star Trek transporters, while technically transferring the target through subspace, are the easiest example to understand. They're shown using both transmitters and receivers, as well as only one of the two with beaming up and down. The teleportation device between Dr. Kleiner's lab and Black Mesa East in Half-Life 2 is another example, though while that did use Zen as a slingshot, it never passed through it. Point-to-point -point teleporters, where a device teleports an object from one location to another while being at neither, are also present in Star Trek, such as the Kalandan Molecular Transporter which moved the Enterprise nearly a thousand light years. Regular transporters could also be used in this manner, but this was fairly uncommon. Similar to object teleporters is door teleporters, which create a portal between two locations that allows instant travel between them. The most obvious thing to mention here is stargates, although they do use subspace wormholes and blah 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 blah. Things enter one side and leave the other seamlessly, but most importantly, the gate spins. There are also door teleporter variants that can open a two-way door to anywhere from a device, such as Star Trek's Sicarian Special Trajectors or Iconian Gateways. As with teleporters, there can be gateways, or perhaps we should call them portals, that are opened between two locations from a device as a third. The last group of discontinuous drive is the teleporting object, which moves itself rather than something else. These show up fairly commonly, with my favourite being in Battlestar Galactica. In close second is the Infinite Improbability Drive from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which ends up being everywhere and everything at the same time, as well as the Displacement Activated Spore Hub Drive found in Star Trek Discovery. That last one does use the mycelial network to travel along, but functionally speaking it is essentially a teleport. And naturally, since it's round, it spins. Some settings have teleportation only be possible to and or from certain locations in spacetime, as occurs with the jump points that stars, pulsars and quasars create in Wing Commander. Various Marvel films and TV shows frequently depict teleportation and portals for travel, both technological and magical in nature, and sometimes straddling the line between the two. To round off discontinuous drives, we have using some type of teleporter to transmit more teleporter transmitters. This happened with the two Ori supergates in the later seasons of Stargate SG-1, which were large gates meant to allow rapid intergalactic travel for full-sized spacecraft. 
Sitting between discontinuous and continuous FTL are permanent gateways through space, typically depicted as some flavour of wormhole. Sometimes they have instant travel between them, sometimes there is some travel time, perhaps through some alternate space or dimension the wormhole passes through. They can be naturally forming or artificial, as was the case with the Bajoran wormhole in Deep Space Nine. Artificial wormholes can also be considered a sort of railroad track through space, some constructed object that allows FTL travel. There is another real-life hypothetical pathway known as Krasnikov tubes, long sections of manipulated space-time that allow superluminal travel down their length, proposed by Russian physicist Sergei Krasnikov. Our partners over at the Sojourn have included something inspired by these in the form of Laurelin conduits, long thought to be impossible until their accidental discovery by the Avalon expedition. Another type of FTL railroad has a consumable track, essentially pre-placed exotic material that fuels the vessel's FTL drive. And now we reach continuous drives, ones where the user or spacecraft actually moves through space. Firstly, there's simple, superluminous travel through real space, just ignoring that light speed acts as a barrier, as Red Dwarf does. To cross this barrier, settings can invoke the use of tachyons, hypothetical particles that can only travel faster than light. Star Trek Deep Space Nine had an episode where the two Ciscos, sailing a replica Bajoran lightship, were unexpectedly carried up to warp speeds by tachyons. While most FTL in Stargate did not use real space, the ancient exploration vessel Destiny did, but was heavily reliant upon its shield and was influenced by proximity to celestial bodies such as stars. The most famous real space drive is of course the Star Trek warp drive and all its many variants, which all work by distorting space-time. The frameshift drive from Elite Dangerous also functioned in a similar manner for supercruise, but is only used for interplanetary trips. For interstellar travel, ships in Elite use their FSD to enter which space, bringing us to the most widely used type of FTL, hyperspace, or somewhere similar. Not every setting that uses hyperspace allows ships to just enter it at will though, sometimes they require gateway devices to enter or exit. This is what the Expanse uses, travel between stars was enabled by the ring gates that the protomolecule built via some enigmatic other space. Sometimes there is a hybrid system, where ships can use a hyperdrive themselves, but the technology may be expensive for every ship, or some other limitation is present. Babylon 5 uses such a system, with the most common access to hyperspace being via large jump gates, with more advanced ships being able to form their own jump points, or even fading directly to and from hyperspace. For sci-fi vessels that have their own hyperdrives, there tends to be three main subtypes of hyperspace travel – fixed exit, fixed direction, and total navigation. Fixed exit hyperspace locks in the ship's destination upon entry, and sometimes hyperspace can only be entered in specific areas as well. So-called hyperlanes are a fairly standard gameplay mechanic in space-based strategy games like Stellaris, Endless Space, or Sins of a Solar Empire, creating specific routes through space to attack and defend. Fixed direction hyperspace is slightly more flexible, as while the direction of travel is locked in, the ship can drop out of hyperspace at any time and any distance from the entry point. I think this is what Farscape's Starburst is, though let me know if I'm wrong. The most common variety of hyperspace travel is total hyperspace navigation. This is fairly self-explanatory, ships can go wherever they want and leave at any time. The only wrinkle for this type tends to be hyperspace itself having navigational hazards or currents, which can sometimes be countered with technology. The already mentioned hyperspace from Babylon 5 is such an environment, with travel not following beacons being a very dangerous proposition. Halo's constantly shifting slip space has different laws of physics, requiring vessels to project a quantum field around themselves to maintain a bubble of real space to survive within. The very last group of FTL types is universe modification, starting with distance, shrinking the space between two points so as to cross it in less time. This has a lot of overlap with wormholes, insert pencil through paper here, but those are usually in specific places rather than being on a per-use basis, though Stargate Atlantis does have a wormhole drive it uses once off-screen in the show's finale. Next is local speed of light modification, which is how regular FTL drives work in Mass Effect. Ships use their element zero cores to reduce their mass, effectively increasing the speed of light in the space around the ship, though they still have to use their normal engines to actually move. 
We're sticking with Mass Effect for regional speed of light modification, as this is how mass relays work. They create a temporary tube of null mass space-time between relay pairs, allowing near-instant travel between them. To round the group out is universal speed of light modification, where light speed just gets increased for everyone everywhere, as happened in Futurama when scientists increased the speed of light in 2208. While not strictly superluminal travel, I have to also mention backwards time travel, as you can just go back to an earlier time, arriving before you arrived. Doctor Who's TARDIS can be the example here, even if it can just go anywhere it really pleases. The really very last, for real this time, FTL option is altering reality itself, sort of like opening the dev console for reality and just changing your coordinates. Is this what Star Trek's Q Continuum uses? They do seem to have that sort of all-encompassing power. And there we are, a big old variety of superlative superluminal spacecraft systems. If you know of any faster than light system that doesn't come under one of these categories, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. But for now, this is Huji from Space Dock, signing off.